Hi, this is Sahana. From past few sessions, we are setting up Entity Framework Core for our project. As a first step, we have installed the necessary NuGet packages. Then, we have set up the model. We have configured the DP context class. Then, we have configured the connection string. In our previous session, we have registered DB context as a service so that ASP.NET Core dependency injection container will take care of the instance creation. These steps are covered in different videos. If you want to go through the videos, I'll, I'll keep the playlist link in the description box. You can have a look. In our today's session, we are going to learn Entity Framework Core migrations and also I'll show you how to create the database. This is our ASP.NET Core MVC project. And we have created this project using ASP.NET Core MEC web app template. And we have enhanced the project with each concept that we have learned. As part of setting up Entity Framework Core, as I mentioned, we have installed a few NuGet packages. You can find them inside dependencies. Here you can find the packages. If you expand packages, you can find the, you can find the NuGet packages that we have installed. We have considered this tutorial model to create our database. Inside the context folder, you can find the tutorial DB context that we have derived from DB context. Inside app settings.json file, you can find the connection string here. If you open program.cs file, here you can see that we have registered tutorial DB context as a service using, using our DB context method. We'll run and show the application. This is our application. Ideally, when I click on tutorial, we should get some information. However, when I click on this, we are getting error saying cannot open database. This is because we have made all the necessary setup to work with Entity Framework Core, but we haven't created the database yet. We are going to see that in our today's session. Now we know why our application is not working, but how to create database? We use migrations to create database. If I have to tell you what is migration in simplest term, then it is nothing but it is an entity framework code feature that is used to create and update database without losing existing data. If you don't understand the definition right now, don't worry. We are going to have further discussion on this. In our MVC application, we have a class by name tutorial and this is our model and we want to create a database table that represents this model so that we can store all the tutorial related data. And we have chosen Entity Framework Core to do this job. If I have to give a technical term to this process, this is called as code first approach. We have first we create a model, then we create a database table out of it. And the database that we have selected to work with our project is SQL Server, which is a relational database. Now, how to create a database table? As we already discussed, we use migrations feature to create the database. If we have to use this feature, we just have to execute few commands and Entity Framework Core will take care of rest of the things. Migration involves two steps. First step is to create the migration and second step is to apply the migration. We use add migration command to create migration and update database command to apply migration. Now I'll show you how to run these commands. If you go to tools, you'll find NuGet package manager. Inside NuGet package manager, you can find package manager console. If you click on this, here you get a here you get a window to execute the commands. Another option to execute these commands is through console window. Because we are working in Visual Studio, it's easier to go for package manager console. So I'll choose package manager console to execute the commands. First, we have to execute the command add migration. And also we should specify the meaningful name to the migration. I'll say first migration. Hit enter. First, it will build the application. See, add migration is successful, build succeeded, and even we have a message, Entity Framework Core initialized tutorial DB context using SQL Server Provider. If you look at the project structure, this command has created new folder by name migrations. If I expand it, here you can find the, here you can find the file by name, 
first migration. This is the name that we have used while executing the command. First part is the timestamp. And it has also created another file by name tutorial db context model snapshot. Let's open and see what's inside. Inside this first migration, you can find the method up and down. This up method has a code to create a table and this down method has a code to drop a table. And this command generates one more file that is model snapshot. See, here again you get some information. Basically, Entity Framework Core uses this file as a reference file. This model snapshot file represents the current state of our model. Next time, if you change anything, let's say if you want more property to your model, then Entity Framework Core uses this file to understand the changes, what has been changed and what was the existing state. In short, migration file updates database schema and snapshot file represents current state of a model. Don't get confused. Database schema is nothing but it's a kind of file that represents structure of a database. And every database will have a schema. See, tutorial is the model which is having three properties, ID, name and description. And this is the first time we have executed migration. So this time it creates database schema that represents table which is having three columns, ID, name and description. And model snapshot file will have the information that represents current state of our model, which is the current state, a model with three properties, ID, name and description. Let's say my requirement has changed. I want to include one more information. I want to include category. Now my model has changed, but, but the database schema represents only ID, name and description. Also, let's assume my tutorial table is already having some data and I want to include one more column, column category, but I don't want to lose existing data. At the same time, if I have to add one more uh, column to the table, even the schema should be in sync with that and schema has to be updated. Uh, this is a complicated process, but just a simple add migration command takes care of everything. We need not worry about anything. From a developer side, we can update our model. We can run the command add migration. But next time when I run the command add migration, I have to give some meaningful name to the migration. Then just you have to execute that command and that entity framework core will update the database schema as well as it will retain the data. This is the beauty of entity framework core. And also it will update model snapshot file. I'll remove this field. I have added this field just to explain you the importance of migration because I haven't created the database. We have just, we are done with the first step that is to create the migration. Now we have to apply the migration to create our database. Let's once again run and see the application should get error when I click on tutorial. Let's verify that. See application is throwing error cannot open database because there is no database by name tutorial DB. To create a database again I'll open package manager console. I'll run the command update database hit enter. See it has given so many information and this step has created the database. Again let's run the application and see the front end. I'll click on tutorial this time we should not get any error. See, it's working as expected. We have created the database and it is displaying the information. We are not able to see any data or any row here because our database do not have any data. If you want to verify this in SQL Server, you can connect to SQL Server from our Visual Studio. Click on View, click on SQL Server Object Explorer. Then you can expand SQL Server and here you can here you can see MS SQL local DB, expand this one and here you can see databases. Here you can find tutorial DB. If you expand tables, you can find this tutorials table here. If you, if you right click on this table and if you say view data, uh, you will see there is no record because we haven't created the data yet. We have just created the database. And if you see here, it has created one more table by name entity framework uh, by name migration history. 
if you view the data here it stores all the migration records in our application we have created only one migration that is first migration so there is a record by name migration each time we update our model and create a migration this migration history table will store all the migration histories all the records if you open app settings.json file here you can see we have specified the connection string and here here initial catalog we have specified as tutorial db this is the name of the database that we have chosen and the same and entity framework core has created the database with the same name see entity framework core is a vast thing we cannot understand this in a one stretch we should keep learning we should keep practicing we should try out different features we should try out different aspects then we can get better at it but whatever we have discussed from installing then creating the db context setting up the connection string and what we have seen in our today's session that is related to migrations all these things will help you to get started with entity framework core and this will give you the basic understanding of entity framework core and how we can set up our own database using entity framework core in our upcoming sessions we can see how to fetch the data from front end to the database i hope you are clear with the concept thanks for your time see you soon in the next video thank you